Totally. Let's turn to the bond market. As Mike mentions, yields moving lower on the back of today's jolts number uh, with two other big pieces of data ahead this week, core PCE and, of course, the jobs number on Friday. Our next guest says the multi-year bear market in bonds is now in year four and shows no signs of slowing. Joining us this morning, Bianco Research President Jim Bianco. Jim, it's great to have you. Um, I wonder if you think the data is going to play, uh, given at least what jolts said today. Yeah, well, let's keep in mind, too, that J July data that uh, we just got, you know, a month ago was very strong. And that's why things like the Atlanta Fed GDP, we're talking about 6% GDP for the third quarter. Now we get the first set of August data and some some lagging July data, you know, and I'm thinking more along the lines of the consumer confidence number took a big dive and the jolts number took a dive and the market predict predictably gets excited about data that comes in well off of consensus. And in this case, it was weaker. So we had some stronger data and now we have some weaker data right now. But I think the trend in the economy is still stronger. And I think that's gonna keep pushing on inflation and that's gonna keep the trend in interest rates up. Remember the 10 year yields high for the whole cycle was yesterday. And the 10, uh, excuse me, the two year yields high for the whole cycle was yep, yesterday. Yep. And the 10 years was last week. So we're not, you know, at anywhere off much off of the peaks that we've seen so far. Are you in the uh, Bill Gross fair value 10 year, four and a half, or the summers get used to four and three quarters kind of camp? I am. I am indefinitely. And for the reasons that they've cited that, uh, you know, that using Bill Gross as an example, he's talking about that inflation might settle at three. That means that the fair value for the funds rate, neutral funds rate is three and a half to four. And when the yield curve uninverts and goes back to normal, that puts the 10 year yield somewhere around four and a half to five percent. We're at 420 right now. So we're well below that level. I think that's where we're going to settle out. And I think what's important to understand about that is, 3%, 3.5% is the new long-term inflation rate. The Fed, Jay Powell, always talks about long-term being 2%. It's now been three years, and we're still waiting. And they're saying maybe another two years to get to 2%. I'm thinking it might even be longer than two years, and we have to start thinking that maybe two is not the target anymore. It is three. We are in a higher inflationary environment. But at Jackson Hole, um, you know, officials there made it very clear that that 2% is still their target. Do you think, you know, we should really fight the Fed on this one? Yeah, and me losing 10 more pounds is always my target, too. But that doesn't mean <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> you know, yes, that is their target. That is what they're going to do. And that's where I think the problem comes in. They're going to focus on trying to get back to two. And I'm arguing that it's going to be that last mile, as we like to call it, is going to be extremely difficult to get from three to two. They're going to keep interest rates higher for longer, the phrase that we like to popularly use in the bond market, because it's going to be so difficult to get to two. And that's where the bond market is going to, uh, people are starting to come around to this idea, rates are not going to go down. As in, for one instance, the market is now pricing in the first rate cut in June, in 10 months. It was the idea or just a few weeks ago, we were gonna have four rate cuts in 2024. Now the first one is pushed all the way out to June. And that means that eventually we're probably gonna push it out to 2025 because I don't think we're gonna get a rate cut in 24. Sorry, Jim, just to follow up on your comment about being really difficult to get to two, is it very difficult to get to two without a recession specifically? Yes. I'm talking about the long-term average to get to two is going to be very difficult. You're right. Cyclical forces like a recession or collapse in the oil price or something along those lines could get you temporarily down to two. And then the minute everything recovers, you come right back off of that number. But to say that the long-term average, the equilibrium of in inflation is two, I think there's got to be more work. We are in a post-pandemic economy. That's a fancy word for saying everything you understood about the economy in 2019 is different now. Take remote work as one example. One third of all global offices right now are empty on any given day because of remote work. Things have radically changed. It's creating frictions and it's creating higher inflation until we restructure the economy for this new post-pandemic world. And that could take a decade plus. Uh, we'll see, Jim. Uh the doves certainly hope that AI and productivity are going to rescue us. We'll find out in a decade or so. We'll talk then. Uh, yeah. Jim Bianco. Thank you. Thanks. Hopefully before. <laughs> From